Hello everybody, I'm Scott from Rockculture.com and I'm incredibly ill, but it's not every day that a new Nintendo system gets showcased to the world. So against all of that, let's start breaking down every single thing that came out of their announcement at four in the morning. First up, it's the release date and the price. Now, the system's going to be released on March 3rd, and the price, in the UK at least, is going to be £280, and in the US is going to be £299.99. Now, this does mean that the system will be more expensive than the Xbox One S and the PS4, but we'll just have to see how it goes. I mean, Nintendo are releasing a whole new product with lots of innovative new features, and I suppose they think it's worth the price. Next up, we got a whole bunch of details on the Joy-Con controllers. Now, we're already aware that these things can be detached from the screen and played separately, but what Nintendo confirmed this time around was that they're actually gonna have motion controls. Now, looking at the original teaser, this was speculated for a while, but Nintendo came out, they said, right, the system's gonna have accelerometers and gyroscopes, and it also has a small IR sensor on the right-hand controller. Now, the controller actually maps a certain segment of 3D space and can recognize things like rock, playing rock, paper, scissors, which is really weird. The example they gave was playing rock, paper, scissors, but who knows how developers are gonna interpret this technology going forward. Now, another thing Nintendo are pioneering is a feature they're calling HD Rumble. And the example given in the press conference was <laughs> that you'd be able to tell whether a glass, a fake digital glass is holding one ice cube or two or three. It's a bit weird. Basically, this is quite similar to the sort of technology that's in the new iPhone. Again, who knows how developers are gonna use this technology, but if, the, if it's that sensitive, that's, that's kind of cool, right? That's a thing, that's a unique thing. Nintendo. Now, one of the biggest talking points is that the console now has a battery life estimate when it's not docked in the system, and it ranges from two and a half hours to six and a half hours. Which, chances are, if you're playing something like the new Zelda, that's gonna burn through it pretty fast. If two and a half hours isn't gonna factor into your day-to-day -day playing of the game, that's actually gonna be a pretty big negative. Now, another feature of the Joy-Con, rather like the PS4, is that it now has a dedicated share button, which they're calling the capture button. We're yet to see many plans about how social media is gonna be integrated for the Nintendo Switch, but the fact that there's an actual button that you can just hit and upload photos is a pretty cool step forward. Nintendo have also said that the button can be used to upload videos, although that feature isn't going to be available at launch. Next up, the system is actually region-free, which is really cool because this means that if any game is released in other countries that you really wanna play, just import it and play. Now, the next potential major negative, but it's cool, I'll make make it okay is that the system only has 32 gig storage. Now, yes, you can laugh because the PS4 and the Xbox One have like terabytes, teraflops, whatever it is at this point, 500 gig and all that kind of thing. But the difference here is that the games actually load from the cartridge. The Switch doesn't need to bother itself with installation times and all that horrible crap that is just ruining a lot of the other console experiences. If you buy a game and you go home, and you put it in the Switch, it'll just work. This means that the 32 gig storage that is left behind can be used for, say, virtual console games or saves, really. That said, if you want to expand the internal memory, the Switch will support micro SD cards. More minor points about the screen, it'll be 6.2 inches in diameter and it is a 720p screen, so no 1080, no 4K, none of that stuff. They need to maintain the battery life somehow. Another one for the potential negative pile, Nintendo are going to start charging for their online service. Now there are a few good points in amongst all this stuff and the Switch will launch with a free version of the online service so you can try it for a few months. Nintendo have said that it'll only become paid as the months go forward, sometime in fall 2017. You'll have to start coughing up the money to keep playing online. But in taking influence from the likes of Sony and Microsoft, you're going to be getting free games every month. So far, Nintendo have only said these will be NES games or SNES games, but either way, there's some pretty good games on those consoles, so... We'll have to wait and see. Now onto the games, and that's where Nintendo come crashing in with 1-2 Switch, which they said is pretty much their attempt at doing Wii Sports again. It's a game that's meant to be played between two players, not necessarily looking at the screen. And the example that they gave in the conference was that two players would pretend to be cowboys and would shoot each other with the, the Joy-Con controllers. It's fine. I mean, the other modes that are in there are like a, like a, a dual guitar thing and like little things like that. It's, it's very light, which is kind of what you expect from Nintendo when they're aiming for such a mass market. The biggest takeaway is that Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is going to be a Nintendo Switch launch title. Fans rejoice! This is one of the coolest pairings of a game with a console since, I'm gonna say Super Mario World with the SNES. We got our first look at Zelda herself, which, you know, very much the same art style as Link, and we got a much bigger look at the world. Now, in the conference, this trailer was cut short, but if you check out the YouTube version, there's a whole, like, four, five minute version that shows off way more of the open world gameplay. Another game which got an official name is now Super Mario Odyssey. Now, this was rumored to be Super Mario Switch and shows Mario running around a cityscape. Now, for me, this reminds me of when Homer Simpson went 3D in that weird Halloween episode of The Simpsons, but at least it's kind of cool because Mario can jump on taxis and fly around like his fake version of New York. We don't know many more details about this other than that Mario has a new ability to throw his hat at foes and also use it as a jumping point. But either way, it's a new Mario. Now, it's not going to be a launch game, but Nintendo have said that it'll be released across 2017 in the holiday period. There are quite a handful of games spread across the official presentation and also on the YouTube channel. In terms of first party games, Splatoon got a sequel, which is pretty cool to see. We've also got a game called ARMS, which had a bit of a divisive reception online, but pretty much seems to be the new age 
Rage version of Punch-Out, you just smash opponents from across an arena with extendable fists. Nintendo. Another couple of Wii U exclusive games that are now getting sequels is Xenoblade 2, which is the original Xenoblade is one of the most underrated RPGs on the system. It's just a phenomenal game. And also a new Fire Emblem, which is Fire Emblem Warriors. There wasn't any gameplay of this, but the Fire Emblem series is legendary at this point. Another truly underrated RPG series. Check it out. We also got to see Todd Howard from Bethesda pop up and confirm that Skyrim is going to be coming to the Switch. Now we don't know if this is the definitive edition, we don't know if it's going to allow mods, but either way, portable Skyrim on the Switch, Yes. In addition to those, we have a game called Octopath Traveler, which is sort of like a Final Fantasy VI style retro throwback RPG. There was also Sonic Mania, which we didn't even know was coming to the Switch. There'll also be a new game from Suda51, who confirmed that Travis Touchdown, the character, will be returning to the Switch, although he didn't pinpoint that it'll be a No More Heroes sequel. A guest character in the new Mario Kart, maybe? Turns out that that version of Super Mario Kart that we saw back in the original trailer is real, and it's called Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. We don't know a whole lot about it, but so far, so good. It's Mario Kart. In addition to those games, EA confirmed that FIFA will once again return to Nintendo's platforms after having not had an installment on the Wii U for years. And there's also an exclusive Shin Megami Tensei game, which you might know as Persona, also coming to the Switch. But again, we haven't seen anything of it other than the title card. Now, sadly, at launch, there are only going to be four games available. That is Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, 1-2 Switch, Just Dance 2017, and and Skylanders Imaginators. It's a bit of a mixed bag to be honest, there's a lot of positive stuff, just about as much as there's a few sort of uninformed negative things. We kind of wouldn't mind knowing a little bit more about exactly what's going to force the battery to drain down or whether or exactly when more games are going to be coming. No doubt you guys are going to be hashing it out in the comments anyway, so let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'm Scott from Oculture.com and I'll see you soon.